To understand Gini index, let us see a simple example. Suppose I give you three bags, one bag full of white balls, one bag full of red balls and one bag with a mix of red and white. Just by looking at the bags, can you tell which bag is pure? Obviously, you will say that the left bag is purely white and the right bag is purely red. But the middle bag is impure and this purity or impurity is what we measure with the Gini index. If a bag is pure, Gini index or the impurity is zero. Whereas if it is mixed, it is impure. But how do we know how much impure? Is this bag more or less impure than this bag? The answer is Gini index. And we can find which bag is more impure by calculating the Gini index of both the bags. The formula for Gini index is summation P1 minus P for all types of balls. In this bag, P1 minus P for white ball is 0.6 into 0.4 and for red ball is 0.4 into 0.6. Adding these two values gives us the Gini index for this entire bag. Suppose there were 5 types of balls in this bag, we would add P1 minus P values for all 5 colors and then add them. In case of a pure bag, the 1 minus P term will be 0 for the color present in the bag. And the term P will be 0 for the colors absent. Hence G will be 0 if only one type of ball is present in the bag irrespective of the color. So now you know how to find Gini index for every bag. You can similarly find Gini index of a data set by looking at its labels. So if this is the data set, we can see if there is only one class of item in the data set, impurity or G is zero just like we have seen before. If it is mixed, then we can calculate it by summation of P1 minus P4 all the classes of labels. In this example, we have two classes, heart disease present and heart disease absent. So we find P1 minus P for both the classes and then add them. Adding them gives us the Gini index of this entire data set. So I hope you found this tutorial useful. If you have any doubts, please post them in the comments below and we'll try to make a video on it.